Station. Dave Michaels reporting. And good morning. It's a chilly Tuesday morning here in Atlanta, the 24th day of September 1963. The present temperature in the city stands at 48 degrees this hour. We're expecting a high of 70 with fair and continued rather cool weather today and Wednesday. It should become a bit warmer Wednesday afternoon. I'll have the full weather story for you in just a few minutes. In the news this morning, the partial nuclear test ban treaty is expected to win Senate approval today by a fairly wide margin. The United Press International Survey indicates 80 senators are committed or inclined to vote for the pact when balloting gets underway this morning. Senate leaders expect only one absentee. Senator uh, Claire Engel of uh, California, who was hospitalized following brain surgery. 18 senators have voiced opposition to the treaty, while one vote is in doubt, that of Senator Margaret Chase Smith. The Senate vote will cap 11 days and about 70 hours of debate on the pact, which bars all but underground nuclear testing. It was advanced as a small but firm step toward arms control and a measure for reduction of radioactive fallout. But opponents argued it offered uh, too great a military advantage to Russia and marked an unacceptable security risk to the United States. Over in the House today, the biggest tax cut legislation in the nation's history comes up for floor debate later today. Passage of the $11 billion tax slice is expected sometime tomorrow. President Kennedy uh, takes off an 11-state uh, five-day trip shortly before noon today on behalf of conservation projects. Mr. Kennedy's first step is Milford, Pennsylvania, where he will cite the achievements of Gifford Pinjo, one of the nation's most renowned conservationists. In other news, Negro Cleve McDowell sits in a Lafayette County jail in Mississippi today after being caught with a concealed weapon at the University of Mississippi campus. The school's only Negro also was suspended yesterday, pending a hearing later today. The dean of students says there is a university regulation against carrying a weapon, but it does not mean automatic uh, expulsion. McDowell's suspension came after he admittedly brought a uh, 22 caliber pistol into a classroom. Sheriff Joe Ford said he arrested McDowell after he was tipped off by a white person that the Negro had the pistol on the school campus. Military and civilian shipbuilding projects valued at some $45 million will be slowed down considerably today in San Diego, California. Some 600 shipyard iron workers walked off their jobs yesterday in protest of what they called a contract violation. The union violated a no-strike clause when it walked out, causing other unions in the shipyard to disregard picket lines. The National Labor Relations Board will investigate today. The strike can cause an estimated two-thirds holdup in productivity in San Diego. Still another Washington development uh, yesterday concerns Georgia Game and Fish Commission Director Fulton Lovell. The U.S. Civil Service Commission reportedly plans to investigate the director. The probe will be conducted under provisions of the Hatch Act, that a state employee cannot participate in political activity if his agency receives federal funds. The exact nature of the probe, however, was not spelled out. Lovell is already under investigation by the state attorney general's office here in Georgia. State Revenue Commissioner Hiram Underkoffler took action yesterday against two retail liquor stores in Atlanta. Underkoffler signed orders revoking the licenses of the Plaza Liquor Store and the Wayuka Liquor Store, both located on Roswell Road. The revocations followed morning-long hearings with representatives of the two outlets. Underkoffler also continued, in effect, the suspension of the Tuxedo Liquor Store's license. The commissioner had this explanation. I feel that Mr. Hunter and Mr. Lunch...